Bible warns us in the New Testament that some shall depart from the faith. And today we're seeing that more and more as seems like the church is being replaced by social media and these wannabe YouTube theologians and Facebook Bible scholars who aren't ordained ministers or evangelists or go to church on a regular basis. And they think they know the doctrine because they want a couple, you know, watch a couple of videos on YouTube or saw some documentary. And all of a sudden that makes them a Bible scholar because they took a couple of Hebrew Greek lessons. So we're going to warn you about more of those dangers. But first, let's get into it. Welcome back, guys. This is your brother, Eddie, on the Bible Jew Podcast, and thank you for joining us on another edition of our podcast, and this one's going to be uh, The Dangers of Social Media Part 2, and we're going to go with that because, like I said, I've been you know a little patient. I know it's uh, been a couple months uh, since uh, episode one on that, and I did want to give it a little time, you know, especially with the holidays, a little busy, and I'm just seeing it more and more, so it's time, you know, I bring it out that, you know, we're going to cover that. Uh, as far as these want to want to be theologians and Facebook scholars, who just keep adding on and on and keep saying lies and lies, lies about the Bible. So we're going to have to take time to correct that. But first, we just want to thank you guys for you know joining us. But, you know, as we always do, remember to click and subscribe and turn on all notifications so you get the latest content. And also remember, as we always do, we'd like to remind you guys to, you know, Please join us on our other platforms because, like I said, you know, we already received the strike and a warning because, you know, these people that don't like the truth and, uh, you know, aren't used to getting rebuked and corrected and, you know, they're a little soft in their feelings and don't want the actual truth. You know, they like to report us. And so, like I said, you know, it's important that you guys join us on Facebook. Uh, you know, we recently got out of jail from that a couple of months ago, but, you know, we're not going to stop the truth. And then that's why we had to create uh, Instagram and Twitter. And like I said, so that's why it's important that, you know, you know, in case we get wiped out, join us on there. You know, it's real easy. Take a few seconds. I know you guys follow other pages and, you know, it doesn't make any sense that, uh, you know, these videos, of, you know, these videos about, the, you know, Marvel and Disney and basketball players are getting 99,000 likes. But, you know, you say you're Christian and, you know, you don't want to support, you know, a Christian brother who's telling the truth. So it's important that we support each other. And like I said, it doesn't take anything. Just a few seconds of your time. Um, so that's why you stay on, you know, notified because like I said, there's going to be other content on there that you're not going to be able to get here on YouTube. Like I said, you know, we'll be sharing, you know, whether it be memes, uh, giveaway prizes, uh, coming up hopefully, uh, here in this year, that was part of my goal for this year for 2023. Also, uh, like I said, I'm going to be sharing content as far as sermon video clips from other pastors who are ordained and, uh, are, you know, rooted in the word and I don't just go promoting any old pastor, like I said, you know, these are uh, independent fundamental Baptist pastors who are, you know, strong in the word and, uh, you know, can verify, you know, anything that I'm saying. And like I said, you know, we won't, you know, as Christians, we won't always agree everything, but I'm not going to go out and, you know, say blasphemy and heresy uh, if it's something I'm not studying. So that's why I said, you know, uh, join us on there. And also our backup page, uh, which is called Voices Power. So you're going to see the link in the description, all that too, in our videos. Uh, with Voices Power, with the yellow logo, and uh, you'll see that there. So please join us on there, subscribe. But it's very important, guys, that you guys give a thumbs up, all right? Give a thumbs up to all our videos because it helps our algorithm. You know, viewing is just not enough. You know, YouTube does keep track of, you know, the more you guys give a thumbs up, the more YouTube pushes that video out onto their stream, and it helps us out a lot and you know, get the message out there because without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. And also, if you'd like to donate to our ministry, we do appreciate that because like I said, uh, you know, we, uh, this is not <laughs> my full-time gig here. I'm just doing this, uh, you know, on a voluntary basis. But like I said, I'm starting out, you know, uh, just with a laptop's about over 10 years old and my kitchen table and my desk lamp. And 
like I said, you know, so we'd like to, you know, give you guys, you know, higher quality, <clears throat> uh, you know, streams. Uh, we're, you know, we're trying to get, you know, better equipment. And as we're conducting street interviews and stuff and, you know, get the cameras and microphones and stuff and get the, you know, the right editing software. You know, I'm just doing the basic, any kind of free stuff I can get and use without having to pay for it. You know, I'm just starting out on my own because, like I said, I am not a content creator. I mean, I'm not some online minister. You know, I work full time. Uh, I got a family, kid, and like I said, uh, you know, so all your donations are appreciated. So if you go on the link in description, any of our videos, all our videos, you'll see a link in description. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, we do appreciate that. Moving on, uh, like I said, uh, you know, as 2023 grows, uh, you know, we, we've, you know, a lot of like different events, you know, at the New Year's Eve, uh, you know, different holidays, uh, you know, you get a lot of, I guess, you know, social uh, events going on, like the Grammys and uh, Super Bowl and all these other things going on. And like I said, uh, so it there's a lot of room for, you know, worldly stuff and get caught up in all those things. But, you know, we have to remember to, uh, you know, stay rooted in the world and be part of the world, okay? Because in James 4.4, 4, it says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that if you're, Friendship with the world is enmity with God. That means that you're an enemy of God. Okay. So if you're a friend of the world and you love the world, okay. Yeah. We, you know, we work in the world, but you know, we, we, we work and live in the world, but he said not to be part of it. Okay. So it's very important that, you know, you don't want to be God's enemy. Okay. Uh, so I don't, you know, I don't, I get away from trying to stay up on the latest things that, you know, uh, on, on every little social media thing and every little gossip and all this stuff, but, you know, if it's stuff that pertains to my world, like the weather, uh, you know, stuff in the news, obviously religious type stuff, uh, you know, just, you know, there might be some, you know, world events, like I said, you know, recently we had the, uh, you know, balloons flying over our airspace and stuff, and, you know, uh, you know, people, oh my God, it's going to be another world now, and, you know, it's all ridiculous, but anyway, um, we move on, today's, you know, as we always do, we always like to start off with a proof text, and, um, uh, you know, to let know where we're starting off from. So our proof text for today is in the New Testament is going to be first, first Timothy chapter one, verses six and seven. So it's going to be first Timothy chapter one, verses six and seven says, for which some have swerved from turned away aside unto vain jangling. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. So basically, the context of that is, you know, we have to be weary of, like I said, these, you know, I'm just getting tired of it, of these, you know, wannabe Facebook theologians and ministers and, uh, you know, Bible scholars who just, you know, uh, they come on here and, you know, they're either trying to debunk you know, I mean, I appreciate some of the work that they do, you know, but you got to remember in the Bible, false teachers, you know, they're not always telling you 100% lies. OK, they mix the truth with a lie. And like I said, you know, for some of these guys, I think that they're just, you know, so caught up in the world that they're not, you know, they don't take the time and due diligence to really get down into, you know, the actual, you know, context and setting of the word. A lot of people, like I said, they're parrots. They repeat what they hear on TV and they're like, Rawr! you know, probably want a cracker, probably want a cracker. And, you know, they're just repeating what other people say. And when you challenge them face to face or if I were to catch them on the street and we start having a conversation, all of a sudden they're like, oh, I got to go. Uh, I don't have time, you know, but you got time, right? To put up all these videos, you got time for to make all these shorts. OK, I know because I make them myself. It, it don't take five minutes. OK, you got to edit it. You got to put in time and effort and all that stuff. So, you know, uh, a lot of these guys, they're just repeating what they say. And, you know, you when you challenge them face to face or without them having to go to their reference, and, you know, their, their little lexicon online or their little, you know, Greek Hebrew dictionary or whatever. You know, they think they're Greek Hebrew scholars. That's a joke. OK, I don't need your Greek Hebrew lexicon or translation or whatever, because I have God's word in my hand. The King James Bible, okay? And anybody who wants to dispute that, 
you know, you can come on my channel and we'll have discussions and we can compare verse to verse and I'll shut you down because the, the word of God is truth. You know, it's purified seven times as in a, you know, as in a furnace. So the word of God is truth. And like I said, the King James Bible is a sword compared to all these Bible versions. They're just a butter knife. And like I said, I have a comparative verse after verse, you know, um, you know, not some, uh, you know, crazy, you know, uh, you know, crazy online zealot who just uh, happened to, you know, start a YouTube page. Okay. Way before all this, and like I explained it, you know, you just can't throw away, you know, history or think or, you know, whatever. Everybody has a different testimony. Everybody has a different background. Okay. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a, you know, uh, you know, theologian with thousands of followers. Okay. That's not my goal here. Okay. I don't care if I got one subscriber or 3 million. Okay. All that's appreciated, but those who want to, you know, who subscribe because they subscribe because they want to hear the truth and they appreciate that. I'm not forcing you to do it. I'm not, you know, my goal is not to be, you know, uh, gone viral. Okay. Uh, like I said, my thing for this is I'm tired of hearing lies. I'm tired of hearing people that pretend that think they know what they're talking about and they're just doing it for views and vain glory. And, you know, we need to expose the truth and warn you guys of what's actually down there. Like I said, you know, you may not agree because you're not used to hearing this, but I, you know, what, what I say is from the Bible in context. Okay. I've never come out and said, Oh, I'm speaking from my heart or I'm speaking because of, you know, I, I feel a duty to stand up, you know, for whatever. Yeah, we should defend God's word. But what I'm saying is that we don't speak from the heart. We speak from God's word in context. Okay. Any monkey can grab a verse and isolate it and say, you know, uh, you know, just like people do, like I said in many other videos, like I said, people say, uh, judge, let you be not judged. And they just create a doctrine and just think that no, the whole world can't judge when that's totally just false. And I destroyed that in my earlier podcast about um, foolish things Christians say. And if you look at that video, you'll see where I totally destroyed that verse after verse after verse. OK, we are commanded to judge righteous judgment in Paul many times and just in the book of Corinthians alone. Uh, he destroyed that as far as like judging each other and judging other people. So with that, you know, it's just the ignorance that people don't take the time to read their Bible and study their Bible or go to church for that often. Because like I said, somebody who's rooted, you know, in church and, you, you know, you could, you know, after a while of talking to people, you know, you could tell who's, you know, rooted, you know, rooted in church and, you know, uh, have that, you know, have that zeal and getting to good teaching and, you know, do the most important work is going out there and preaching the gospel and getting people saved for Jesus Christ because, you know, many people, unfortunately, are not going to heaven, okay? And people want to treat God like, you know, yes, he is, you know, love and God is, you know, love and and uh, mercy and grace, but he's also wrath and judgment and punishment and people don't want to hear that. And that makes them unbalanced, okay? We need to have balance in our Christian life and need to know that the fear, the Bible says in Proverbs, in Proverbs 8, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all understanding, okay? And the problem is a lot of people don't fear him, okay? They just want to love him and think he's your best friend. He's just going to, you know, hug you and never going to, you know, until whatever, you know. Yeah, he he loves us and is not going to forsake us, but he didn't say he was going to not punish you, Okay. We are sinners, okay? And say, oh, he washed me from my sins and this and that. Yeah, he washed me from my sin, but you're still a sinner, though, okay? He forgave you of everything you did in the past, present, and future. But the thing is, what you don't understand is salvation. Uh, in Hebrews 12, like I said, he punishes all his children. So if you're a saved child of Christ, he will punish you on for your earthly you know, sins that you do here. You, you will pay in some form, whether it be... You know, uh, you might disease, you know, it might get a car accident, you might, uh, you know, lose your wealth, uh, something might happen to you, okay? Just like, like I said, if somebody commits murder, even though they've been saved and they killed somebody, you know, that's wrong. But, you know, they will suffer punishment on this earth, whatever the earth gives them uh, and justified by the, you know, by the government, because God did institute government, yeah, according to Romans 13, that whatever this world gives you you know imprisonment or the chair or whatever it might be 
you'll suffer that, but your soul and you know spirit go to heaven, but you will suffer punishment on this earth. So don't think you're just going to get away with it. You think, oh, I'll just become a Christian and then I can just do whatever I want. Okay. There comes punishment and wrath from the Lord on this earth. Yes, your soul and you know spirit will be saved, but like I said, really, you know, we should, you know, uh you should develop fruits and you know try to do the best that we can, you know, even though we're always going to fall short of the glory of God. And people forget that, that we always will fall short of the glory of God, no matter how good we are, uh, no matter what we try to do, you know, all those good things are good, good deeds as far as, you know, trying to help people, stay out of trouble, you know, and people say, well, I'll just follow the law and follow the Ten Commandments and don't realize that there's 613 laws, statutes, and commandments in the Bible. And those things Nobody can follow them every day. You know, we all fall short. Nobody can sit there and say that they follow 613 laws in the Bible every single day. Because people say, well, faith without works is dead. And, you know, I've destroyed that in the Jehovah's Witness videos that, you know, people don't bother reading the whole chapter because they forget earlier in, in that chapter two of James. It says that that yet <clears throat> that if we, you know, hold to the law. Yet we offend at one point that we're guilty of all. We've offended all because, you know, so if you make that your standard, okay, if you're going to say you got to keep the law of Moses and keep all this stuff, then you'd have to keep every single law, the dietary laws, the washing laws, the sacrificial laws. That would be your standard. But guess what? That's why we don't need to do that. Okay. Um, yes, there's, you know, as far as like cardinal ordinances and all that stuff, it even says in the New Testament that, that although the divers, divers washings and all that stuff, that, that that was done done away with until the time of Reformation. And Reformation was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So once we had Jesus, you know, came, we don't need all that. He's our resurrection. You know, he's our, you know, getting away the law. He was the school, you know, the law was just a schoolmaster to point us to Christ. So, and, you know, we don't need to keep the Sabbath for all you Sabbath keepers and do all this, you know, it's just a bunch of bumbo jobo and, you know, and we just get tired of it. But also, uh, the reason why I said, you know, we bring up that proof text is because like I said, you know, what I see, when I'm seeing more and more um, with these, you know, try to warn you guys. And as I, you know, I'm guilty of it. I'll flip through the, you know, I'll flip through the uh, phone or whatever. And <clears throat> I see it more and more. Whether it be, you know, unfortunately, people's patience are running out. People are really getting lazy, right? Uh, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, Facebook reels or whatever. People's tension span is like 60 seconds and it used to be longer, but they created these little short things. And now people's attention spans even probably less than that. And that's, you know, that could actually, you know, ruin people's brains because all of a sudden they, they watch this 30, 60 second video from some Bible guy or a guy thinks he knows the Bible and he just gives you a verse or two. And, and then they just keep watching this guy, watch this guy. And all of a sudden they think they're just some, you know, Facebook theologian. You don't know where you're getting this information. You Do you know this guy's testimony? He or she's testimony? Do you know how they ordained? You know what I mean? Uh, not everybody has to be ordained to be like teaching and stuff. But like I said, you know, if you're going to be out there trying to be like a, a you can just get be like want to be pastor or want to be minister or give yourself a title other than pastor. As long as you're trying to avoid that title, you know, it's like people play too many games here and they're going to pay the price because like I said, they're teaching heresy and you could tell they're not rooted because yeah, they might get lip service. For example, I might hear somebody who, you know, he may not say he's Baptist, you know, I'm independent Baptist. But he might say, oh, I'm just Christian, or I'm just this and that. I'm once saved, always saved. I believe in the Bible. I believe in salvation, the Trinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then all of a sudden, you know, uh, little by little, you know, because I'm just, you know, natural detective, uh, you know, in, in my, you know, secular job. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been in private investigations, uh, you know, for quite a few years now in the private sector. And it's just, the, I guess, the, the, the techniques of, you know, just, just detective work or just, you know, following the evidence, following, you know, certain questions that you have to appoint and then get to those and, you know, make sure those are answered. And then it's really by listening and observing and you put the evidence together along with what's 
you know, the actual truth there and you line it up and then you get your, you know, basically you get your, your end investigation there and your conclusion. So, um, you know, they might give lip service to all that, but at the end, they're all of a sudden they come on and say, Oh, God is sovereign. Or they'll say, uh, you know, Oh, uh, you know, sodomites, uh, LGBT people can be saved and they can become and turn Christian, Christian and repent. It's all false heresy, okay? And I'm not saying it's because the Bible says that, okay? To reprobate, okay, concerning the faith. It says, when God turned off the light in Romans 1, it's like, you know, that's where that's where it offends me, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying because, you know, whatever, is that the Bible says that they're not born that way. And the reason they're that way, the reason why they're these drag queens and these trans freaks and these whatever are doing all this, okay? Is because God turned off the light. Read Romans 1. Okay. They weren't born that way. God made them that way. So he turned them over to a filthy lifestyle. He called them vile. He called them filthy. All right. He said, God turned them over to a reprobate mind. God is the one who turned off the light on them. Okay. So they can't see anymore. He never turned off the light and turned it back on. Okay. Once he turned off the light, that's it. He said that they're worthy of death, not by my hands. Okay. They're worthy of death. You know, like the old Testament said that, you know, uh, if you look at the word sodomite in the Bible, you'll see four times in the King James Bible. If you look at the word sodomites, you'll see that each King of Israel, a new King that came in, they got rid of the, they stomped and, and smote and got rid of them and kicked out the sodomites out of, out of uh, Israel. Uh, you know, because they were unclean and they knew they were dirty and spreading disease and stuff. So they 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 had to cleanse the town. So, you know, that's I didn't say that. God said that, you know. So if you don't like the Bible, then it means you don't like God. So you have to take that up with him. You're gonna go go ask him that. But as far as like, you know, with what the Bible says, like I said, they've been turned over to reprobate mind. You know, people forget the effects of that. Is that <clears throat> the reason why you you know you see all that is that you know, we're all born of God. And and he even says in the beginning of Roman one that God has manifested in us, okay, so that we're born without excuse. Okay, we can't sit there and say, Well, I didn't know. God's nature, God's, you know, everything that he wants of, of us is, you know, at least a good is manifested in us. Okay, it's in us. Okay. When you decide to go against nature, because that's what God described, you're going against what nature is, against God's form, okay, man with woman. Not man with man, not woman with woman, okay? Or bit this and that and binary and all this crap, okay? He said, there's one way and that's it, okay? Um, you know, so when you go against that, okay, that when you knew God, you glorified him not as God. You wanted and you became vain in your own imagination. That's what the Bible says in Romans 1. You became vain in your own imagination. So you want to do what you want to do not what God wants you to do. So that's that's really more of the battle. It's it's because they just are fighting God and don't like God and hate God because he knows that he made it very clear that it's wrong. And well, well he's just gonna forgive me. You know, uh, you know, we'll get into that in a later episode, but basically is that these people that are, you know, saying, like I said, they're one saved, always saved, Trinity, and I'm a Christian, and you know, they're out debunking uh uh, tongue talking Pentecostals and demon slayers and all this other stuff. You know, as other cults, yeah, you know, I, you know, we appreciate that. But like I said, you know, instead of being 70% or, you know, you know, you're 70, 80% rooted, you know, I'm just trying to inspire to get you to be, you know, a little bit better, you know, and improve on that. And a lot of it comes from, you know, one is why we have these false teachers because they're using the wrong Bible. And like I said, that's why, you know, the King James Bible, and I'm going to be, making my next couple episodes on that about why it's important to have the correct Bible and to have the proper teaching. A lot of it becomes from having the wrong Bible version. Okay. Because a lot of you, you know, it doesn't make any sense that you're once saved, always saved and against works and against Calvinism or all these other doctrines, but yet you're using an NIV, ESV, NSAB. It doesn't make any sense. You say you're once saved, always saved, but you're using a works-based salvation Bible that teaches works that changes the deity of Jesus that lowers it, takes it away, you know, puts in salvation where it shouldn't be there, okay? And, you know, well, we, and that's, that doesn't make any sense. So uh, we're going to go into another text here. Um, 
In the book of James, chapter 1, the book of James, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So what is bridleth? Bridleth means that if someone who refuses to keep quiet and just one of those, like, he snaps his back, you know, he thinks he's so, he's so arrogant, he's so right that he just refuses no matter what you tell him that I'm right. And he's one of those refuses, like I said, uh, the extra dictionary, one who refuses to uh, keep silent and uh, reverses his chin and, and, and neck. So basically he's one of these, you know, I, you know, I'm so right. And you can't tell me what to do. You know, that's, that's one of those guys. So, and the brighter not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. See, he tricked, he's a, he deceives his own heart. Okay. He thinks he's right, but he's actually not right. He said, this man's religion is vain. So no matter what you're preaching out there, I don't care how many viewers you got and subscribers or how many people watch your live stream, 3,000 live stream, people watching your thing in an hour, your religion is vain. It means nothing, okay? Verse 27 says, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. See? See, when you're right in doctrine and you're right in the rudiments of the word, that you know you have to keep yourself unspotted from the world. So nobody should be able to call you out or be able to call out things that you know are known 100 percent wrong. You know, people are either saying amen, and other people that are in the field can say, Hey, brother so-and-so is correct, brother so-and-so's testimony is correct, and we say amen to that, or you know, uh, he's never said anything, you know outside of that but when people you know come on your show and calling you out and some people have been right and i think that a lot of people's problem is that they just don't like correction and it's pride and which is another sin pride is really nothing good it's it's actually used over 90 times and usually the context is something wrong prideful is not good especially when it's used in psalms and proverbs a lot uh you know I think it's people's pride that they just don't like correction. And like I said, that's a bad attribute because when I'm wrong, you know, I will take correction on that. And I've been, you know, wrong. And that's why I learned to, you know, bridle my tongue. So when it comes to, you know, and teaching that there should be prayer, supplication, giving attendance to reading, giving attendance to listening. And a lot of it comes grounded like, Back what I said was to be at a good, founded Bible preaching church. And unfortunately, you know, there aren't, there's a lot of, good, you know, good churches out there. There's a lot of ones that, you know, are, are, are trying with the best that they can with what they have. And some of them don't even have a full-time pastor. So we pray for them. And that's why we need people to stand up. And, you know, that's why, you know, us as Christians, our job is to, you know, uh, study the word. All right. First Timothy, it says, until I come, give attendance to reading and doctrine, okay? So until the Lord comes, we have to keep reading and, and learn doctrine, and we need more and more men to stand up, all right, and be, you know, servants of God and whatever capacity that may be. Not everybody's going to be a pastor or be an evangelist, but some, you know, can be, you know, teachers, youth ministers, uh, depending on your, uh, you know, what you're doing there, Um you know, the, the important part is out there winning souls and getting people saved, okay? Learning the Bible is great. Yes, we should do it. But most importantly is we need to get back to the basics here because if everybody's with this end of the world stuff, you know, not everybody's going to heaven, but we need to get as many people saved. And it's going to start by preaching the gospel. And most of these guys that are on YouTube, you know, social media, whatever, <clears throat> They don't even go out witnessing. They'll say, oh, yeah, well, I've been out witnessing. Or I do this and that. Come on, man. You know, I guarantee you, stop lying because God God can see you, okay? If you were out there soul winning or this and that, I'm not saying you got to record it every time. But, you know, I'm not perfect, but I got plenty of footage. I, You know, ain't, ain't no lying to me, okay? I'm, you know, we're out there in the street. You know, we're out there in the street, you know, whether we're, you know, we happen to be interviewing people or whatever. But, you know, we, you know, we go out knocking on doors and, you know, with the winter time. You know, here in Chicago, you know, it can be minus a degree, you know, below zero weather. So, you know, it's, it, we've been kind of hindered a few weeks here and there. But, you know, the sun's out, it's decent temperature. You know, we go out there, but 
uh, all the other times of the year, you know, you know, we're out there uh, as much as we can, when we can with our, with our work schedules and stuff. But, you know, as far as my content goes, nobody can say that I don't, all right. Cause I got plenty of testimony, brothers and sisters in Christ that we're out there knocking on doors. I know my gospel presentation, you know, of how to witness to somebody and, you know, somebody can practice it all day long and memorize some lines, but you know, when you're interviewing somebody, you know, or talking to somebody live, you know, uh, I bet they couldn't do it. And like I said, uh, if I were to ask him certain questions, I'd probably stump him. So, you know, all this main knowledge, you know, doesn't mean anything really, unless you're actually, you know, preaching the gospel. And like I said, being rooted in church where, you know, um, if you guys, you know, need help on getting a uh, links to some, you know, good Baptist churches uh, who preach the word and use King James Bible, uh, you know, I can give you guys a link for that. And it'll find you by zip code and, you know, uh, churches in your area. And you can give them a call and ask them questions and this and that. But other than that, like I said, you know, <clears throat> all these people, like I said, they're, you know, their religion is in vain if they're not bridling their tongue. And it seems like I said, they, they're right about everything, you know, all oh, because, oh, I, you know, it was because I do a show twice a week or I'm putting up all these videos or I got 99,000 subscribers or, or, you know, uh, I'm close to 500,000 subscribers and, this and that, you know what? There's just that. I mean, that doesn't mean anything, you know. I guarantee you that like, if you were the pastor of the church, not even a hundred of those people would be at your church, you know, every Sunday. So, and that's the thing. We got a bunch of lazy Christians who just, you know, want to get their theology and get their learning from people who aren't even ordained pastors. Okay, I'm not going to listen to some dude on YouTube just because he's got ninety nine thousand subscribers. I much rather listen to an ordained pastor who's strong in the word and he might only have you know 20 followers you know but the guy's rooted in in the word and he's you know speaking the right doctrine and you know i say amen to that and we're singing the hymns okay we're not singing rock crutch you know uh rap songs and christian music and and repetitive crazy rock music uh singing the yeshua every uh sunday okay that's not that's not christianity okay you open up a hymn book and you sing old classic hymns with a piano OK, and, uh, you know, a chorus and a choir. And, you know, that's 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 to me uh, real church music, classical class, you know, classic hymn singing, congregational hymn singing where the whole church sings. And, um, you know, but other than that, like I said, you know, going out there, you know, with a strong Bible doctrine. And I'd rather much, you know, follow that than, you know, these guys who just come on there. All because, you know, you took a course on Hebrew and Greek. You think you're such an, you know, online scholar now. Or, you know, half the time you don't even, like I said, you don't even pronounce the word. And, you know, I just want to, you know, call you guys, call you guys out. And you'll see them on the channels. Whether it be, you know, Alan Parr or, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you know, some of these guys, you know, I, you know, you know, I've watched some of their videos. And some of them, they're, you know, they're kind of spot on about what, you know, the guy or person that they're trying to call out. But, I'm just trying to warn you guys, okay? These guys aren't actual pastors or Bible scholars, okay? And whatever that they speak, okay, no church, their own church doesn't back up what they say, okay? Otherwise, they'd be like, hey, I'm speaking on behalf of the church or, or the pastor, so-and-so is back up to what I'm saying, okay? They don't have that, okay? And that can raise questions, okay? So you need to ask yourself, where is this coming from, okay? You need to open your eyes, read the Bible for yourself, Get in church, okay? Because you say you're Christian, okay? Uh, you know, we need to get rooted. Find yourself a good local Bible preaching church. And then you'll see that the doctrine lines up with what maybe you've heard already and what the pastor's saying. And go up and ask the pastor, hey, what about this and what about that? And, uh, you know, sit down and have that or, you know, sign up for men's or Bible study night or women's Bible study night, you know? Fellowship with the other people and find out if there's any Bible study you you know, in your, in your area, in your group at your church. So that's always a blessing, but don't just take advice from, you know, whether it be guys like, you know, uh, like Alan Parr and guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, fighting for truth or uh, Colin or whatever his name is, or fighting for truth. And, uh, you know, Corey and smart Christian channel and all these other guys that keep seeing, you know, all the you know guys of podcast you know I'm new so I don't you know I just see these faces and I you know I don't just you know uh, criticize them right away but you know some of the things I you know I agree with you know I appreciate some of the work that they're doing but 
I think a lot of it's becoming, you know, more prideful. I can see their pride pop, puffing up more and more. And I see that they're using the wrong Bible and getting the wrong theology. And they'll give half credit to this and half credit to that. So, you know, they're, they're, they're to me, they're unbalanced. So uh, with that, you know, at least, you know, I'm not saying, you know, follow me or I'm jealous or anything like that. <laughs> and, and, you know, I don't, uh, I don't claim to be, you know, this and that, you know, what I'm saying is that, you know, I'm a full-time member of an actual, you know, independent Baptist church. Uh, you know, I've gone to Bible college. I know proper hermeneutics. Does that make me a scholar? No, but I know how to break down on what, you know, the Bible's how supposed to be read and what the context is. That's the important part of anything is, is the context. Okay. Just because, you know, and then the, some people cover it, like I said, with, oh, well, let's look at the Hebrew and let's look at the Greek. And, and like I said, I covered in the video, you know, before is like, you know, I'm just getting tired of it. That that is when I hear that, I just, I just get, I just get angry because, uh, I don't need Greek or Hebrew to learn what the Bible says because I have the King James Bible in my hand. It's already been translated from the original Hebrew Masoretic text and the Texas Receptus to receive text. Okay. You're, you're, you're reading off of a Greek text that's been transcribed off of the Latin Vulgate. It's been transcribed from Latin to Greek to English. That's what you're reading. You're not reading the Greek to Greek from the Greek to English. You're reading the Latin to Greek to English. Okay. Commentary. And so you're reading the wrong one. So uh, not every, you know, Greek uh, manuscript lines up because all the ones that they argue, well, older is better. No, because you're finding fragments. All these ones that they keep finding. See, God promised to preserve his word. Okay. He didn't say that you were going to find it in a monastery or that they're going to dig it up in some desert and found parches and, you know, pieces of parchment and put them all together. When they put them all together, more than half of them didn't even agree with each other because they were all in fragments. So if you look at the Texas Receptus, which is the original Greek New Testament by guys like, you know, William, you know, William Tyndale, uh, uh, Stephanus, Erasmus, you know, these are the received texts. You know, there's almost 6,000 Greek New Testaments that are handwritten, you know, not necessarily, you know, older is better, but they go back to 119 AD, the, the oldest one. But the thing is, they agree 99% of the time when they've all been compared with it. The work's already been done. They've been read. All 6,000 have been read, uh, transcribed, not just by one person, by a team of people, okay? They spent years doing it, and they all switched it out. Hey, you look at document A, you look at document B. And I look at document B, I look at document A. And keep switching back and forth. Document C to see if they all say the same thing, and they do, okay? So you just can't you know, throw away seven years of work that the King James translators did and think that you're some theologian just because, you know, you're studying Hebrew and Greek and you go to your little internet page and, and show it side by side. That's not even Koine Greek, okay? You don't even know how to talk Koine Greek. Greek. How would you know, okay? Because there's classical Greek, there's modern Greek, and there's Koine Greek, which is the ancient Greek, which is the Bible was written from, not the Greek of today. And that's what you're putting online. And that's why you're deceiving people. And that's why I get upset because, you know, you're reading lines that don't even, well, well, this says that and this is this. And it's like, you think that like by showing them that that makes you so much smarter. And I know what it, I know what it says because I know what it says in Greek and Hebrew. No, you don't, you know? And it's like, what does that matter anyway? Even if you did, are you preaching the gospel in Greek? Are you going to Greek town? Are you going to Greek? Greek sometime today, this year, and 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 going getting people saved in Greek. So what is the point of that? That's just vain glory. That's just pride. Okay. So if I'm going to learn it, I'm learning because yeah, if I want to know what it says, because you know, things I have faith and trust in the King James Bible because the work's already been done. I don't need to refer to it to look at it. But somebody was challenging and saying, okay, let's compare Bible versions. For example, like I said, in you know. uh because I've done it, I've done it from experience. Okay, my good friends are Greek. You know, I've said it before. Say it again. That you know, uh, the Greek New Testament. I have friends that are ortho Greek Orthodox, and I had them show me screenshots of Revelation twenty two, uh, their Greek New Testament. I lined it up with the King James Bible, looked at the Texas Receptus, and they all say the same thing. Revelation twenty two fourteen. It says, 
Blessed are they that do his commandments. Okay. All these other new Bibles, because you think you know Greek. Okay. All these other new Bibles say, blessed are they that uh, wash their robes in Greek. But it's not the Koine Greek. It's the Latin Greek, Latin translated Greek in English, which is all corrupted. And that's not what the original says. Okay. That's not received. That's been criticized and reviewed using textual criticism. And that's not. You know, that was something that was developed in the 18, you know, in the uh, late 19th century. OK, so that's just not something that was done years ago or process that we used years ago. Uh, we received the text. I start out writing it on the original author. I make it, you know, I give it to somebody. They make a copy. That guy makes a copy. That guy writes a copy. Yeah, there's going to be spelling mistakes. OK, because we're tired. We're sleeping. You know, you're doing this. You're doing that. Back then, you know, they didn't have bright lamps. They didn't have a, a desktop laptop or speech to text, okay? They had a bound pen and parchment, and in the middle of the night, during the middle of the day, might be rubbing their eye, drinking, you know, drinking water, moving their hand. They might start writing with the left because they're getting tired or shaking their hand. Yeah, there might have been scribal errors, you know, but they didn't change the doctrine. They didn't change the deity of Jesus, or they didn't remove the word hell and put all these other new words in there, okay, because they thought that was better, okay? So, you know, that's why I said, beware of these guys. Don't let them fool you with, you know, teach you, trying to teach you Greek or Hebrew and think that, 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 you know, that trumps what you're talking about. Number two is don't fall for victim is because of popularity. You know, don't think that because they got, you know, 202,000 subscribers and every time they live stream, you know, they got 8,000 people watching them, but they're, you know, their teaching is, you know, down the tubes or, you know, they're just doing it for pride. Oh, oh, look, see, I got 8,000 subscribers, so I know everything. But you don't know how to preach the gospel, though. You know, what does 8,000 viewers mean do if you're not going and teaching them, if they don't know, okay, teach them how to how to teach the gospel. When was your last gospel presentation? You know, so with that, you know, don't, don't fall victim to that. And also, you know, don't fall victim of, you know, just because it looks good doesn't mean it is good. And unfortunately, be careful of what I call trolls or basically, you know, people looking for attention is because you get some of these people to hide, you call them hijackers, you call them, uh, you know, Bible hijackers is, you know, and I'm sure you've seen it is I post something and even if it's from an ordained pastor who just clearly said a Bible verse, explained it, okay, but yet they comment on your post and try to hijack it with this big, you know, 50,000 word essay where they copy and pasted uh, a link to a article that they read, or, you know, you could tell that they looked at Time Life magazine and copy and pasted the, the author's uh magazine review and it's like you just you're just looking for attention dude you're just a troll okay nobody asked you for that okay if the pastor clearly explained that right for example like i recently posted something about the road to salvation and that not everybody's going to heaven and the battle hell's a real place and a pastor basically quoted matthew 7 where jesus says that you know we're not everybody's going to heaven and he says in matthew 7 Matthew 7, verse 13 through 15, it says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many be there go which they're at. Verse 14, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. 15, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So, you know, that right there, the Bible, you know, clearly explains it. And, and the pastor, which I posted, clearly explained that, okay? He said that, that enter you at the straight gate and wide is the gate and broad is the way. That means that many people that try to enter into heaven, you know, are going to destruction. They're not, they're not going, okay? Many people are, be, are being led to destruction. But verse 14, it says, because straight is the gate as far as like, there's only one, one road to heaven, okay? Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And narrow is the way. That means only few people are going, okay? That the way into heaven, not everybody's going. The, the road into heaven is like this small. Only small people 
are going because you know they do believe and a lot of people just won't believe and it says few be there that find it but these new bibles that you like to put faith in you like these newer bibles it says that difficult is the way and hard is the way it's not hard to get saved it's easy to get saved you just believe in the lord jesus christ okay how easy is it to eat a piece of bread how easy is it to take a drink of water how easy is it to open a door you know, these are the things that God described as far as like salvation. So uh, don't let these people fool you. And then you get these people who comment and try to hijack the comments and take attention away from, you know, the actual point. And they just, you know, looking for attention. And they just, you know, basically either I tell the guy, well, I just, he clearly said that. What's your point? And he couldn't. And he just repeated exactly what he said. And I'm like, he just said that. What are you not understanding? And then the guy's just like all upset. And it's like, you know, that's just that's just pride. Again, that's just pride. You're just trying to hijack and get attention for yourself because, you know, you don't have any attention on your channel. So it's just like, you know, buzz off, man. But so like I, said, I just want to warn you guys, you know, about the dangers of social media. You know, watch out for these Facebook groups. You know, joining groups is fine. But don't just believe every post that you see, okay? And don't believe every guy that just makes a video and putting, you know, just because he's, you know, putting on YouTube shorts every week and putting on videos every week, that's the guy, you know, like, you know, not saying, you know, every once in a while I try to do what I can. I'm talking about if you're a content creator and that's your thing, you know, whatever. But, you know, usually the 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 root behind it is uh, is money, okay? Uh, you know, I'm not here trying to make money. You know, I got my own job, but like I said, donations are appreciated. But I'm here to try to put the truth out, okay? But if they're putting out five or six YouTube shorts a day and then putting out live streams like five, six times a day, you know, I can tell you, you ain't going to church. You ain't at church. And I can tell you, your pastor hasn't seen you in a long while. Okay. Cause he, even then he's probably asking you like, Hey man, you're going to come to church, man. You know, I see you on uh, making all these videos on YouTube, but you don't come to church, you know, but you say you're a, you're a Bible scholar. Okay. And people say that, Oh no, we don't, we don't you know, uh, we don't need to congregate. Yes, we do. Okay. The Bible commands that. Okay. That we all need to congregate. And that how should we learn without a preacher? Okay. So don't let these people fool you that, um, you know, just because they have all these followers and subscribers doesn't mean that they're necessarily telling you the truth and they're rooted. And I'll challenge it. And I'll challenge and debate them face to face or, you know, through Zoom or whatever we got to do through uh, 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 any kind of streaming service. You know, I'll have to beat them anytime. You know, come on my channel, go on your channel, and I guarantee you, well, you know, rip them apart. So, with that, we just want to leave you guys and, you know, warn you guys about those things. Just remember to click and subscribe to all our, uh, you know, platforms. Keep us, you know, in your prayers and thoughts. And also remember to uh, keep your eyes open out there because more and more people are falling away from the faith and we want people to be saved. So if you really want to learn the true way to salvation, go in the bottom of any of our videos. You will see the Bible way to heaven in English and Spanish and also the links to all our platforms. And once again, like I said, all this is not without you guys helping us out. So all your help is appreciated. So if you'd like to make a donation, remember to look at our, uh, the links down in our videos and you'll see a link to give us a donation. And we do appreciate all that. And with that, we do want to thank you guys. So have a good day. God bless.